What up my freaks, Ruin Insight here with part 5 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded King Lewin campaign. So as we saw last time, Lewin was able to face off against Belakor and knock out his main stack. In addition to that, we have invaded Albion, taking down the Isle of Wights, and will proceed to, uh, well, destroy probably everything here. I'm still not 100% on whether we should keep him around or not, but uh, I don't know if we want to deal with the hassle of coming back up here and the constant threat of invasion at the same time. Hmm, hard to say. Anyway, uh, we'll figure it out as we go. More importantly, perhaps, is the fact that as we ended last turn, we had the Royal Stables completed, which means Esther here can now recruit units of Questing Knights and one unit of Knights of the Realm, all of which will be units which we will be able to get names for, and which is quite nice as well. Uh, we could also, if we wanted to, build some more Knights Errant. Hmm... Certainly a thought. These guys cost 189 though, compared to the much cheaper peasants. I was just thinking that we should probably replace the uh, the various men at arms and stuff with melee versions of the knights. Hmm. Although I do have to wonder what the disparity in HP will be, as in what will be the better use. So these guys have 1,300 or 1,200 uh, 12,000 rather HP and these guys, well the peasant mob, have a lot more but they also have atrocious leadership. Hmm. I'm not sure. Well, either way, I think we only have one turn left of the uh, of the refugee influx with the recruitment cost reduction, so we should probably make use of it right now. Let's do two peasant bows with fire arrows and two with pox arrows, and perhaps... Wait, actually. You know, let's do two knights errant, like so. And just two more. The Knights Errant are a little bit weak, uh, but it may be a significant portion of time until we have more questing knights and knights of the realm available. Yes. Though I suppose we could just build a royal stables in Castle Artois or something like that. I will think about it. I'm sure we'll have use for you. Anyway, uh, let's do one, two, and one, two, and that'll significantly impact our money. We should also take a look at what we can... Oh, we have the Marienburg Harbor available to be built. It's so expensive, though, that we wouldn't be able to build anything else. Hmm, quite the shame. Let's build the basic walls here at the very least, as it may get attacked. You know what? We can fund this. We can fund this like this. Non-aggression pact, military access, trade agreement, and then give us... Oh, only 2,000 money? Ah, we'll still take it. And we're not going to do a defensive alliance. I'm still 100% sure that Marienburg is going to die. They're going to get themselves killed by somebody. So we could just wait them out and ally with them and gain at least some benefit from them being nearby. And uh, then we have Kurun, which we're not upgrading anything at, and then Fort Bray, which we're not. So I think we're free to get the Marienburg Harbor. Beautiful. All right. Next, what we're going to do is this. I was originally thinking that perhaps we would want to attack Yalmar here, but what we could actually do is move to besiege Conquata. We can't attack it because we don't have siege attacker, but that's just fine. And because, well, we could just build these. Uh, because regardless of that, most likely what will happen is because the enemy has a decent amount of troops here, Hjalmar will actually attack us and draw Conquata out as a garrison, which I think will work quite nicely for us as well. All right, uh, we'll move the two prophetesses there, and I'll double check the vows before we end the turn. As you guys have been doing a great job reminding me, frankly. Uh, I really have to check them every turn, and it's uh, it's quite the hassle, isn't it? Uh, you should go into channeling stance. There you go. Uh, we probably don't need to level you two up, because we're waiting for the peasant's purpose. Mm, yeah, but we will check your vows. So you're still okay. And you, how about you? You need to get a vow. Legendary Lord of Ogres, Beasts, Greenskins, or Dark Elves. Seems not super likely. Uh, win a siege battle in a desert or jungle climate or win a battle at sea. But then again, the win a battle at sea is also somewhat unlikely. Oh, man. Because this wouldn't work for... Well, hmm. Maybe it would. Maybe there is a way to do this. All right, go to, go to win a battle at sea again. I have an idea. 
For a single battle, we can have Lewin not lead the army, but reinforce. And then that'll still work with the islands, won't it? Yeah, all right. Win a battle, let's see it is. Uh, Lewin, you are good, but what about the rest of you? Okay, so we're waiting on your trough. We have the questing vow up and running. And then we have... Your vow up and running as well. All right. Let's level up Lumen and Co. just in case, or because I think that they will get attacked next turn. And I guess we'll just keep going through Glorfinial's progeny. And we don't have this for another three levels. And the rest, I think, is not worth our time. So we'll do that. Then we'll level you up, though we will be replacing you relatively shortly, I imagine. Hmm... Should we start going through Steel Tech? Because I'm still reasonably sure. Well, then again, we could pop you into a second army. Yeah, all right, fine. Let's let's get you evasion. No, you know what? Let's get you another point in Curse of the Midnight Wind. We do use it quite a bit, after all. Well, then you two. Uh, Scarred Vet, Deadly Onslaught. Fantastic. And lastly, you. Blade Shield, Scarred Vet, and then one point in Deadly on Or, yeah, one point in Deadly Onslaught next level up. Beautiful. Okay, let's see if this plan works out, shall we? Uh, let's get the tech up and running, which I guess is going to be the her heraldry of Leoness in order to confederate them. And then all the way through Bastun, Carcassonne, and then all well, the other stuff. We'll have to wait for a little bit, but we're looking okay. End the turn now. Well, let's see if this works. All right, come on, Hjalmar. I know you want to attack and draw us out into uh, combat, especially outside the walls. It'll make for a better fight. Uh, huh. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting Hjalmar to attack us, not you by yourself. But if that's what you want to do, it's up to you, sir. And good luck. Alrighty, here we go, and damn, the, uh, the snow is very bright and very blinding. Uh, that's going to be unfortunate. Are we gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be in a bit of a... Well, I mean, we can still see the units okay, it's not like that orc battle. But anyway, uh, the battle will start off and the enemy will immediately use its bombardment ability. I didn't even notice it, or at least noticed it too late. And thus one of our poor units of peasant bowmen will be pretty much destroyed. Though at the same time, we're going to be replacing them very shortly. So it's not like it's going to matter much. And this is going to be the last battle where... Uh, uh, where Lewin has to use the Pegasus rather than his, uh, his Hippogriff map, so that'll be nice as well. And we may as well enjoy him on Pegasus form one last time. Alrighty, well, we are going to start annoying that enemy Chaos Sorcerer Lord. Can't be letting it cast stuff while the rest of our army tries to annoy the enemy as best that it can. We're obviously going to wheel the knights around, but considering they've taken damage, we'll have to be a lot more careful than we have been in recent times. And while they can, in theory, heal, we might be able to take too much damage here, so it's still going to be most definitely a concern, especially as there are Chaos Warriors and Chosen, all with great weapons. And a Chosen unit with great weapons in a one-on-one -on -one against a, a Knights of the Realm or a Knights Errant will easily go to the Chosen, especially if the uh, latter are unable to maneuver. So, we're going to have to watch out for that. Uh, looks like the enemy has allowed its uh, Chaos War Shrine to be somewhat isolated, but unfortunately, the uh, range fire from our peasants has forced the enemy Forsaken to go into a rampage and thus directly head towards the Pegasus Knights, leaving them unable to knock the Chaos War Shrine out. Not a big deal, as these things are just huge arrow targets, and we'll simply target it with all of our arrows once we're in range. Anyway, here come the Forsaken charging towards our peasant line, and they're gonna kill plenty of them on the charge, and plenty of of them are gonna get uh, uh, charged themselves as the as the knights errant plow into them from the uh, uh, from one of the flanks. Trolls are still running around. We're trying our best to focus them down with arrows, but that's not gonna uh, be too effective. Not to worry though. The peasants will pin them in place, and the knights errant will hopefully hit the. Uh, 
or the Knights of the Realm, rather, will hopefully hit the trolls with their anti-large. Lovely. While the Knights Errant plow into the uh, Marauder's Spears as well, Trolls low leadership and will break pretty much immediately, but that isn't, uh, that isn't really the threat here uh, that the Chosen are. We're going to have to figure out a way to bring those down. Over on this side, we can see our poor unit of Spearmen at Arms is pretty much done fighting those Forsaken in the sense that they're pretty much dead. On the bright side, though, the enemy Lord is pretty much dead as well. Broken, low HP, Luin and the Pegasus Knights flying overhead, watching the glorious spectacle and cheering their king on. All right, and there we go. We can see the arrows now start focusing down that big old war shrine and hopefully sufficient, uh, sufficient range firepower to bring it down within reasonable time. Can't have it buffing everybody up. All right, and we got the poison arrows hitting it as well, plus some... <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of our own peasants have arrows in their backs, but, uh, well, they better get used to it. Alrighty, War Shrine goes down right in the middle of the enemy formation. Beautiful. Here comes an Uranon's Thunderbolt into the enemy uh, Chaos Warriors and the Chosen as well, though it's going to be quite some time before we can fully bring them down. Out over here, Chosen are fighting the uh, Men at Arms and just ripping them apart, but fortunately we do have Knights periodically charging them in the back and in the sides, or at least, if not them than another unit uh, but we obviously can't stay engaged so we charge them hit them a few times and then hope we don't lose too many knights chosen with great weapons are very scary after all and this is without much in the way of buffs either as they are a settlement garrison yeah, probably a good idea to destroy them here rather than uh, wait for uh, more reinforcements to arrive. So it's actually a good thing, I think, uh, that Hjalmar and the Van Heimlings decided not to attack us. Anyway, with the enemy lord defeated, Lewin and his paladins, uh, Lewin and, the, and his pals have peeled away from the enemy chosen and marauders uh, that were all the way back here. And I noticed that there is the other lord, but uh, not a sorcerer lord. Well, we can ignore him in favor of trying to keep our main line from collapsing, which by the looks of the HP on the peasants is very close to happening. The knights are still okay, but well, the knights won't be able to prevent the Chosen from charging enemy, uh, or from char charging our range peasants and killing them all. All right, taking so many of those peasant arrows to the side, and it takes so, so many to bring a Chosen down, which does feel appropriate. Here come a few more regular peasants charging in, and the Pegasus Knights helping out, and that looks like that is sufficient to actually make one of the units, the first of the unit of Chosen, actually route. You're doing a decent job this time around, peasants. You're holding against something a lot more scary than zombies and... Uh, uh, zombies and other weak things that you have had to hold against in the past. There we go. And here comes Lewin to try to hold off, and it looks like another pile of those Chaos Warriors are going to rout. The battle is not over, however, as a Chaos Warrior unit has routed. There's a full HP unit of Marauders and a full HP unit of Chosen with great weapons. At the same time, our knights are rather busy, uh, either trying to chase enemies around, especially the one that uh, the Tomorrow Knights, who got pretty badly beat up, and probably can't contribute to the fight anymore, as well as the others who are trying to make sure that very few enemies escape. At the very least, the Chaos Warriors and the chosen need to be destroyed lest they uh, lest they survive and just stand behind the enemy walls actually you know what the blinding snow isn't that bad i thought it would be worse but it uh, it actually makes the units that are fighting really pop and the same with the blood which ain't uh, which ain't a bad thing there we go, back into the new unit of Chosen with great weapons, but this time we have Lewin and both Paladins leading the way. And while the Chosen can rip our poor Knights of the Realm and Knights Errant apart with relatively decent ease, and they're going to have a lot tougher time dealing with Lewin's regeneration and the Paladins' general tankiness. 
Alrighty, and there it is. With that, the Chosen Shatter and the Battle of the... of uh, The Last Battle of Albion, I guess, is ours, as Bellacor will be destroyed after this, as long as we can make sure to kill everything off. Alright, gonna chase them off off-screen, but well done, Lewis. Luen will see if all the peasants manage to survive, though their HPs are all pretty much a sliver here. All right, very nice, very nice. That one was uh, that one was a little bit of a toughie. So props to the AI for uh, taking the advantage and or initiative rather, and actually trying to to attack us. I think that was a pretty good showcase of how armor piercing is going to be needed soon. Our army almost uh, almost entirely lacks it, and thus things like Chosen and Chaos Warriors are going to be quite the issue to deal with until we get those questing knights on the field, which are indeed armor piercing. Now the ransom captives is only 550, so it's probably not worth taking. Let's take the execute captives for this one, and then hopefully the additional campaign movement range will allow us to reach that settlement the turn after with only a single bound. I would actually also like to see where Hjalmar goes. Will he attack us again? Hmm. And where are you going? Your Ziflin destroyed. Oh, fantastic. We were waiting for that. Uh, <laughs> hey, a Razor standard as well. Very nice, but... Uh, uh, Eleanor shouldn't have it. Beaky is now available for Lewin as well, so that's Siege Attacker and the Knights of the Lionhearted, Knights of the Realm Regiment of Renown. Fantastic. Uh, can fed between Paravon and Carcassonne. That's also great. In fact, if you could just confederate everybody, uh, if you could just confederate Bastun as well, and then just let us confederate you, that would be awesome. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to say, hmm, well, we should probably still continue to work towards the confederation of Carcassonne, hmm? I was just thinking, maybe we just ignore it altogether and just wait for them to get more powerful. And certainly another option, hmm. But Leoness, I think, is still uh, very much confederatable for us right now, as we already have Musion. But anyway, anyway, uh, Conquata is ready to fall. Let's just do this. Lewin, you are going to get the Razor Standard. No idea why it went on the uh, uh, on the Prophetess, and you already have Beaky. Yes, yes, you do. All right. Now I guess the question stands: Do we occupy or do we destroy? And ha. Huh. You can, in fact, reach Citadel of Lead from here. So I guess we could sack it. Should be auto-resolvable, right? Yes. Uh, we'll give the Razor Standard to, let's say, one of the Knights Errant, because they're generally weaker than the Knights of the Realm, and thus this will hopefully make them a little bit stronger. We'll auto-resolve you. Like so. And a free War Banner. And War Banner in SFO is so much better than it was in uh, Vanilla. So free Weapon Strength, which we can put on any of the Knights or even on Lewin, should we desire it. Uh, put it on... Nah, you know what? Let's put it... Hmm... Yeah, put it on Lewin for now. Then... Oh. Sacking the place uh, removes Chivalry and 30 at that. It's 2k, though. And it's not like we're going to keep it. We could also raise it, but I was thinking that we'll want to briefly occupy it and then abandon it. Although it's not, it's unlikely that we'll be able to heal up anyway. Well, either way, I think we'll sack it right now because I don't want to waste the turn of Luan. Sack. And we killed in battle. War banner, yes. Spell resistance for Avril Mercier. And a scroll of power for Eleanor. Hero for Luan as well. Gained by, oh, this is an upgrade to that one. Yeah, fine. And Chaos Breaker, yada yada yada. Luan, can you still reach the Citadel of Lead? Yes, indeed, you can. Fantastic. In one round, too. Though, hmm. Another question is if Hjalmar lands, would he be able to reach Conquata? Well, let me see if I can figure this out and do this right. Because. We want Luan to get the Savior buff, right? So he doesn't necessarily need to attack the Citadel of Lead himself. 
And we could have Avril Mercier or... Well, let's just have Avril do it. You're going to go here. And you're going to besiege this. And, oh, that'll... That'll identify whatever other Norskins are nearby. But what can you do? <laughs> Which means they'll be coming for us. And, hey, there's a mysterious island here. Uh... Galings still aren't known, which is good. But I'm willing to bet as soon as we take this place, they will be. Maybe if we raise it. Uh, you are going to occupy Conquata, just briefly. Which will not allow us to he heal that much, but a little bit. Shadow Legion destroyed, but yeah. I think I don't really want to deal with them, to be honest. And, oh, as soon as we occupy that, the World Walkers have become known. Hmm. Well, that's a shame, but, uh, well, shame only in the sense that we'll have to move southward to deal with Nakari before probably sending somebody up to Noriska. I do like the Errantry of Zeal. Is the Errantry of Zeal 2 give us the same thing? Yeah, I'm into attrition. Okay, good. I wouldn't want to lose that. Maybe I should have uh, deleted Kinkwata after all. Well, either way, don't collect the income for now. I want to see, at Tier 3, the Ohm Stones give us plenty of control to counteract the control here. And a little bit of money, but it's probably not worth keeping. I mostly just wanted the ability to heal here before we head out at sea. Luan, you're going to go right here near to the Citadel of Lead. And let's hope that we can auto-resolve this. Though, honestly, if one of the peasant units dies, I guess it, uh, it won't matter all that much. And then we'll have Avril. No, we cannot. That'll kill off all of the, uh, all of the filthy peasants. All right, we'll do that in a second. I'll just do it manually real quick. All right, and let's see what we got in terms of upgrades now. So Fort Bray, we still ignore Kuran. Langi is ready. And we do need the defenses here. Uh, a shame to lose the... Uh, a shame to lose the income, but what can you do? Can't have it fall. Uh, we'll get the Bretonian Fishing Harbor, if nothing else, for the money and the growth. Though it ain't that much either. I should probably level up the uh, farm as well. Although the farm will most likely get replaced by um, something from here, but we'll see. Uh, let's start with you. Bretonian Fish and Harbor. Then, uh, Musillon is fine for now. Grungzint is fine. Marienburg can upgrade the Die Maker. And Castle Artois is not quite ready. We have met before. Oh. This is actually a considerable investment. You know what? Let's actually switch to the Realm of Chivalry first, and then we'll build those just to uh, reduce the uh, reduce the costs. And I guess you're already in Realm of Chivalry, so that's fine. Then what we'll want to do is take a look at this. Damsels are now available. And a life damsel. We have Intelligent and Perceptive. Perceptive does not work. And thus it's useless. And Intelligent is... It's okay. But I think we can wait on something a little bit better. Which is a shame, but better to wait and have something better. It's not like we don't have a mage right now. After all, I believe that's it in terms of what we want to build. I mean, we could upgrade the die maker to the next level, but it's not that big of a difference right now. And at 1800, it's a little bit on the steeper side. Now let's double check. Oh, wow. You want a non-aggression pack. Oh, that's quite interesting, but it's obviously not going to happen. Barrow Legion. Lewin's coming back sooner rather than later, after all. Alrighty. Well, it looks like we're good then. Uh, let's skip this. And then we'll quickly attack you. And we'll fight this manual. I'm just going to max speed through it and use the knights to uh, to destroy the enemy here. Mm. I wonder if we can make the Norskins fight each other. If, uh, if Wolfric gets into a fight with Throg, that might allow us enough time to go in and destroy Nakari before, uh, before dealing with him. And the thing is, we also have to remember that uh, I did the endgame scenario at turn 50 for this particular... Uh, uh, are you on a horse? Oh, you're not on a horse, are you? That's going to be a problem. Oh, I actually, no, you are. You're fine. Uh, they'll never catch you. All right, start deployment, start battle, and speed it up to max. Yeah, what I would like... And, oh, they're not actually going to move towards us. Fantastic. Also... I would like to not be bothered by Norska, but around turn 50, which is when the endgame scenario will pop. Much earlier than I normally deal with, so... Yeah, and we have to have a decent enough army to take a hyper-elite uh, vampire stack as well. Anyway, uh, Lewin, Beaky... Oh, I guess this is the first time we're seeing Beaky, technically. Alright, you guys get ready to move. 
Don't really need anybody else, and especially the peasants are hurt, and you get... Well, I guess we could use the archers. And uh, all of you. Ah, oh, they have a decent amount of cav and anti air. Hmm. Alright, wait. Wait here. Speed it back up to max. And get the peasants in here, let's say. They're gonna keep repositioning themselves. And let's move you in. Let's move you in. Let's move you in like so. Good. And then you guys, knights, are gonna get into position of lance. And okay, you're firing, but not at the uh, not at those we want you to fire at. All right, then we'll want the two knights and the tomorrow knights to hit those uh, marauder horses, and we'll want the uh, Pegasus knights to do the same. Peasants are still on the way. Speed it back up to max. If they move, we'll react. But if they don't, we'll uh, we'll wait until they do. I mean, why not, right? And oh, they're already annoyed. Okay. All of you forward, and this changes things. And speed it back up to normal speed. You hit the uh, hit the Marauder horses. You follow suit, please. I would like you to charge those Norskin warhands, and you guys to back off. Lovely. All right, some peasants are moving in, but that's fine. Knights go. All right, Lewin's in the middle of the fray, and let's uh, go for the melee damage reflection. You guys go after the horses, and we should be good. All right, I want to be careful about taking losses here because, well, obviously we don't want to. Oh, you know what we can do though? We heal a little bit, uh, like so. Keep you two together. All right, somebody go after the war horses, war horses, uh, the uh, war hounds rather. They wish they were war horses. All right, knights are charging in, but let's be careful about losing, uh, taking damage on them as well. Charge the marauder chieftain, and there should be another unit of knights somewhere here. Not that it'll matter much. All right, Unites charge on through. All range units attack the Marauders and then charge into the fray here. Silly though it may be. All right, and then you two just keep healing each other. Actually, there's no need. Just wait a few seconds and the battle will be over. Not a proper battle, obviously, just uh, that the game wouldn't let us out of resolve, so you gotta... I gotta do what you gotta do. All right, fantastic. All right, and we don't need to chase because the settlement will be destroyed anyway. And SFO doesn't let you heal up post battle via the uh, via Earth Blood and similar recovery spells, so there's no need to wait. One loss. Okay, which idiot managed to get themselves killed? That was probably one of the peasants. So that means zero losses. Uh, Iron Curse Icon, sure. Uh, we will raise the place with you. Nice. And Pit Fighter and Vow completed for Florence Dubois. Damn, still no savior on Lewin. Damn it, Lewin. Come on, man. All right, you leave the settlement. You head into the settlement. Here, wait one second. We're at 58. Oh, let's see the last one. 65 and 2. 72 and 2. Okay, good. We're fine. All right, you two stay here. Are you sure you don't have savior yet? No. You do not have savior. Oh, well. Alrighty, uh, Florence Dubois, you completed your vow and... Oh, you're done. All of them. Oh, very nice. Huh. Now we need to get another one in there just to start uh, getting their vows completed. But still, well done. Alrighty. I believe we're saving the end turn, aren't we? So that we can build stuff at a reduced rate, which means... I believe we're good to end the turn. Alright, skip, 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 and turn. Watch Wolfric immediately declare war on us. We're a little busy, Wolfric. Don't you worry. No one will come for you. I remember back in Total Warhammer 1 at the very least, and I think Total Warhammer 2, the Luin AI, the Kurun AI, always loved to go up to Norska and then do stuff over there. Uh, you wanna give us military access? Sure. Especially with free money. We're about to need it anyway. Alrighty, and we're down to 948 per turn. Ouchie. And, but hey, the requesting knights, and they'll be cheaper once they're in Lewin's army. Have to remember that as well. I. Oh. Are you gonna try to go for Long Yi? Can you take Long Yi? That's a question. Hm. I guess we'll find out. Lewin, head out to sea, please. And you won't be able to heal anymore, but, well, we need you My at sea anyway. And then you two, follow Lewin, please. I know the way. You as well. And I gotta... 
You two are holding a lot of items, and you shouldn't really be holding any items, but uh, that's fine. And we'll probably abandon Conquata, mostly because I don't want to deal with it right now. We might come back and take it, and then actually build it up at some point. But for now, I'd rather leave it a ruin, and if somebody goes over there, well, then uh, we can deal with that. Alrighty, so, first of all, the items. Obsidian, Lodestone, Iron Curse, Icon, and Channeling Staff. And then you... Scroll of Power, Caress of Fortune. Then, I assent to your orders. what do we have here? So the Obsidian Lodestones are fine. We'll actually need them. We got a Pit Fighter. Uh, any purpose to this on you? Not really. Ah, we're fine. All right, what about this stuff? Caress of Fortune gives us armor and weapon strength. Channeling Staff and Scroll of Power will delete you or fuse you into another Sword of Strife. Okay, fair enough. And we have a Sword of the Quest here, but we have nothing to... Mm, to delete. And then same with the Curious of Fortune. Alright, I guess we'll have to wait for the rest. Alright, that's fine. Uh, Sword of Strife versus... Sword of the Ladies Champion. I think the Ladies Champion is probably superior. You know what? We'll give Warrior Bane... No, actually, no, we won't. Warrior Bane, Matthias, you keep holding it. You'll be better off uh, debuffing everybody because you're sticking with Luan. Give the Iron Curse icon to somebody, though. Maybe one of you. Like so. All right, fantastic. And now we can build upgrades. So you, you, and... You're a little bit iffy, but do you as well. And it'll be a while before we get any other upgrades going, unless we want to delete this and replace it with something. And we do want the Carpenter's Workshop. We also do want money. In fact, we need money. But we also need the Rally Field. Not necessarily here, but in general. Alright, how about you? Yes to the Water Wheel, yes to the Better Landed Estate. And what else? We can build the lumber yard, or we could do something like a chapel of the lady. Income adjacent provinces. It was something that's oh, the tavern slash brothel it gives us control in adjacent provinces. That's quite nice as well. Or we build the royal stables here. And, and now you know what? I think we'll build the royal stables at Leoness. Uh, yeah. Or the Blackstone Post or something else. I feel like it's a bit of a waste here. Let's build the Lumber Yard. Might be able to get more trade agreements. And I trailed off because I was wondering if there were any available right now. But alas, not the case. It's okay. I believe we're good now, yes? No real money left to spend on anything important, certainly. And, well, I guess we could do the uh, Die Maker. Yeah, fine, do the Die Maker. Actually, no, don't do the Die Maker. I just realized this uh, is going to cause us to go probably negative income soon. We need to see about a location where we may want to trade growth for money. 455 at minus 8. Man, maybe we do need the brothel here. Eh, quite a bit, isn't it? I mean, obviously Venerate the Lady completely counteracts this. Maybe then that's fine. We'll just use Venerate the Lady instead, although I do like the research bonus. Alright. That's a little bit of cash. Fort Berg Bray, you will not make cash. You are making 700. Alright, fine. Uh, Albion is abandoned. Moussillon will not make any money. Grungzint will not. Uh, you, Marienburg, can. But at a cost of minus 9 and only 313. Not worth our time. Die Maker. Alright, good enough. End turn. Oh, for a second, I thought he was going to declare war on us, but there's no way. He wants us to join the war against the Seducers of Sonish, which we will, just not yet. And we got to get down here first. All right, are you coming for Long Gi, sir? I'm willing to bet you are. I don't know how damaged he'll be by the time he gets here, though. Hopefully he can't reach it in a single... Okay, well, he reached it. Can the Long Gi defend itself? I'm going to say probably... It has a decent amount of... Yeah, yeah, oh, it has a couple of Knights Errant in it as well. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Reichland Confederated. Aim for the head missile strength. Swell, but irrelevant to us right now. Uh, Dastan Cold Eyes nearby. Hmm. Well, that's concerning. The decent likelihood of him attacking us, and we're not at full HP. 
Damn, the Knights of the Lionheart had cost 4.6k to recruit for his time. Oh, he actually can't afford it. That's crazy. Okay, well done. Hello, one. I'm gonna move you in regular stance, or regular speed. And we need you to stay with these. Hmm. I wish I knew what exactly was in your army, but, uh... Let's ignore it for now. You're gonna go here. Wait. You're gonna go here. You're gonna follow. Want them to stay roughly with each other, and then we'll move to Nakari. You go here, and then Lewin, you can... Oh, you're gonna have to be in March stance as well. Eh. Nonetheless, I'm sure it'll be okay. Shouldn't do things like this and... Oh, no, we're fine, we're fine. We can. We could have fought this, actually. I was thinking they might have a ton of monsters or something in it, but at full HP we would be able to take it, no problem. In fact, Lewin... Hmm... Now nah, stay here. We'll leave you where you are, sir. And this has to be traded to Lewin anyway. Can these guys do anything interesting? Uh, dismount, Heroism of Indomitable, and Heroism of Renewal. So still the same type of stuff. Honestly, I think Exceptional Offensive might actually be useful on Knights Errant because they're a lot more fragile. So maybe we'll actually make use of that. I'll think about it. Anyway, you, Timber Mill, and let's double-check Diplo. At your service. Because what? we did get more trade goods, but apparently not enough. Uh, defensive alliances with lots, including Aetan. Yeah, we should probably make friends with Aetan. All right. Words, Trying to get that no trade agreement going, but, uh, well, it'll happen say. eventually. Once we have sufficient alliances yes. with all the elves, they'll all like us, and then they'll all trade with us. In fact, Avalorn is the same. And do defensive. One gold? Okay, no thanks. Yes. Alright, this gives us a decent amount of vision around Ulthuan right. as well, and being able to keep an eye on the sea, what? and see enemies coming before they reach us is also going to be quite valuable. Well. Military access with you. A little Sigma's bit of Diplo. Will. Anybody else we want a defensive alliance with right now? We will probably want one with Reichland, but not at the current time, I think. I'm going to wait it out a little bit. Also, how do the Wood Elves feel? Ah, they're okay. They're okay with Carcassonne, they're okay with us, etc, 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 which means that's another end turn. Skip, 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 end turn. Mr. Gulbrandson, you're going to attack Longi. Tyrion wants us to join war against Nakari. Yes, we will, but just, just give us a minute. It's a little premature, wouldn't you say? Alrighty. He's going to attack because he has no choice, because he has no more settlements remaining. And... Oh! I was not expecting that. Ha. Huh, interesting. He besieged you. Uh, wait. Lewin, land here. I would like you to get that savior buff, so maybe we can. Like this, and I guess all of you can follow as well. The annoying aspect of this is it didn't recruit the rest of the units, but... Hmm. Hopefully this army doesn't run. Actually, if it runs, it'll be annoying. And all of you, come here. My steps are guided. And no vows completed by the looks of the world events, so nothing new. Does Esther have a vow? Pretty sure she does. Oh, win a battle at sea. Yeah, that's also not gonna have an attack. And... Oh, we're missing one. Eh, not a big deal. I'll resolve. And standard of discipline? Eh, still a meh standard. Esther, you can, I guess, ransom the captives. Alright. Savior for Lewin, there it is. Alright, now we don't have to do that anymore. And Vanaheimlings. And destroyed. Fantastic. Alright, Lewin, I would like you to do a little bit of a trade. Uh, all of this for three of you. Mm, in fact, we need to make one space. Wait, wait, how do we do this? I mean, let me just let me just consider this. You're at 22 now. And you will also want to give up two men at arms, which will be replaced by these two knights. That'll be 20 out of 20, and I guess we'll give up the other men at arms, which will give us one space for one additional archer. Yeah, that's everything. All right, exchange units. Alright, there we go. Now these guys are a lot cheaper. They're only 255 when in Lewin's army, so a lot more manageable than it was before. 
in terms of cash flow, and then we'll wait. Hopefully this isn't bugged and we can still get it, but we'll... Uh, I guess we'll see. Well, then you, I guess, have no choice but to stay here, because you have to wait for the rest of your units, so... Stay here, and then we're going on to Nakari. Now, let's see if there's upgrades to do. Marienburg, you're ready for another wall upgrade, but I think you can hold just fine without it. Uh, you're making decent money now, but your public orders still leave something to be desired. We can upgrade the town at Grungzint, but I don't think that's worth our time. Moussillon, however, I think is, mostly due to the fact that it will uh, it will need defenses when we start fighting here. And I believe that's it. Alrighty. Alrighty. Objectives. And just to double check. Now wait. Victory conditions. Uh, we've destroyed Moussillon. Just want that short victory for that control bonus, but not quite yet. Alright, end the turn. Let's get Lou and the rest of his stuff. And then I'll name the uh, the new acquisitions in the next episode. You ask for a boon. All right, Mr. Carl, a defensive alliance. Uh, you want that now? I was saying that maybe we shouldn't right now, but maybe we're okay with it. He's doing pretty okay. And ah, damn, how are you still alive? <laughs> oh, Marienburg. All right, well, you just hold on to it. You know what? Fine. Fine. Do a defensive alliance with him. We may want some Reichlander, uh, some Reichlander artillery sooner rather than later. After all, and what do we have here? Peasant service, income from farms reduction, but bonus casualty replenishment, or income from industry reduction and income from spread the word stance. I don't think we have any industry income. Do we? Find out. No, we don't. <laughs> no change whatsoever, which means we're fine. Uh, Lewin, what is the spread the word? Oh, it's just raiding stance. Okay, well, we're probably not going to do that too much. It costs us chivalry, but it gains... Hmm, a decent amount of XP and stuff. And, oh, it gives you bonus control, so we could do this in our own provinces and increase the income from the buildings. Ah, huh. penalties with raided actions fascinating well either way esther you're gonna trade the new acquisitions to lewin so knights errant to you sir and as in bows knights errant are going to take the place of the spears at arms and that's 20 out of 20. all right pretty heavy and night wise at this point in time by the looks of it and we don't have much of a, a peasant line anymore um, but well uh, that should hopefully be fine you are going to hold on to the peasants for us i'd replace them to be perfectly frank but actually you know what maybe we give them to one of these armies uh, the ones that are following lewin anyway and lewin in the meantime can move out to sea Let's hope that they can follow him, then we can hit Misnar, and then hopefully immediately go for Nakari. Uh, we can't afford... Well, actually, we can just afford the Knights of the Lionhearted. And then we can afford nothing else. Man. <laughs> do we do it right now? I mean, there's certainly stuff we want to upgrade, but it seems so right to have the Knights of the Lionhearted with them. All right, fine. Uh, let's take... You know what, let's take the Wardens of Monfar. Keep the peasants with the peasants. Alright. I'm working on full 535 per turn. That is crazy. But they're like his signature unit. And he's gotta have a signature unit. Alright. Rule, rule of cool. And ah, oh, we can't give them an upgrade. Oh, that's a shame. That's a crying shame. But oh well. Uh, Lewin, move it. Esther, you're going to trade all of these units to... Let's see, who has the life? You have the life. You're going to follow Lewin around. Not that I think you specifically need it, but well. All right, away you two go. And I guess Eleanor has to follow as well. And there is an island nearby. And ah, it's a mysterious island, so we won't get the uh, win a battle at sea from it. Anyway, 
Uh, let's see. We are well and prepped to fight Nikari, but I think we'll save it for next time, as uh, we probably don't have time to get into a full big cinematic battle against all of this. And damn, he's got lots of defenders at the Shrine of Kurnus. Looks like some fun battles ahead, and we'll also have to give the uh, unit upgrades and names to a decent amount of the knights. Stay tuned next time to witness the debut of the Knights of the Lionhearted and all the questing knights with their lovely armor piercing and whatever upgrades we end up giving them. I'm still tempted to go for casual to your punishment rate, but I'll think about it. Indomitable is quite nice as well, and we are starting to rack up various forms of casualty or punishment rate that might counteract the need for the other casualty or punishment rate. In fact, Army of the King and Lion's Shield right now. Anyway, more Lewin to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.